Joining us right now for more on the latest in the financial sector, Chris Whalen, chairman at Whalen Global Advisors. Chris, I don't know if you were listening to the conversation we we're having right before the break because we oh, yeah. were commenting a bit on on and previewing what Warren was saying. He seems to be suggesting he thinks everybody's going to be fine. And he said on our broadcast, I think just two or three weeks ago when he was with Becky in, in Tokyo, that he thinks that every deposit is safe. But I was saying on the other side of that, that may be true, except that if you're a treasurer of a small business that happens to be at one of these banks that you're seeing the stock collapse, you might make some other choices. Where do you think we yeah. are in all of this? Well, Warren's right. Retail depositors don't really have anything to worry about. It's the business depositor, Andrew, that you're talking about. And if you've got to meet payroll in a couple of weeks and the Treasury is offering you 5% on 90-day T-bills, that's a fairly easy choice. Uh, what you see today, by the way, that we wrote about overnight is that banks are being forced to raise their deposit rates up to where the Treasury is. So that's, that's this week's news. That's this week's news. Um, we, we seem to have a bit of a comeback last week after it mm. felt like there was a lot of anxiety around PacWest and some of the other banks. Then we seem to get into at least a slightly better place. How do we get out of the woods here? Well, unless the Fed is willing to, uh, you know, walk back their current policy and give the banks some more breathing room, I don't think we get out. I think you'll see more banks fail. And the reason, Andrew, is that you have a couple of things going on at the same time. Uh, on the one hand, you have big losses sitting on the books of these banks. If the 10-year Treasury widens out to 4 percent, it looks worse. If it tightens to 3 percent, it looks better. Very easy, OK? But the cash flow problem inside these banks is not going to go away unless the Fed does something. I've suggested they need to finance the assets from 2020 and 21 basically at cost for the banks until we get out of this. Uh, I don't think the Fed's going to do that. So we're going to see more problems. That's it. That's it. Do you anticipate seeing a real deposit guarantee program that's explicit put into place anytime soon? No, I don't think they have the votes on Capitol Hill yet. We have to build a crisis uh, before anybody's going to act. That's the way Washington is now. But I do think that the industry has been getting away with not paying uh, assessments on the total domestic deposit base, which I think they should. Uh, some people don't like to hear that. But the reality, as you've seen in the past two months, is that if we see instability with smaller banks, right. the business customers are going to walk. And that kills the bank. Chris, you probably can't see it on the screen, but I'll read it to you. Western Alliance, PacWest, First Horizon, Comerica, Citizens Financial. They're yep. all in the green. PacWest, of course, being up 34% on Friday. Yep. Would you buy any of them at these prices? No. No, I, I got rid of my Western Alliance. I love the bank, but there's no reason to hold it now. Until the Fed is done with what they're doing, uh, I think all banks are suspect at this point. Why would you take the risk, Andrew? Well, I think the only reason you take the risk is if you think that there's massive upside on the other side. I mean, I think there are no. people who are probably very happy that they, they <laughs> piled in to PacWest on Friday if they were able to capture the 33 well, percent spread, right? It's easy to have a big update like that when your bank is trading at 0.3 times book value. But I think what I would tell people is that since the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, the better managed institutions have come to realize that they have to raise their deposit rates to where the Treasury is. So what I see coming in this quarter, Andrew, is you could see a big down uh, leg for net interest income simply right. because funding costs are going to go up 100 percent this, this quarter. Uh, so Chris, and I think th right. this is something we have to focus on for earnings. The other piece of this is that there's an expectation, I think, once you get to the fourth quarter, maybe first quarter of next year, that you start mm. to see the true losses emerge in the commercial real estate world. And which mm. banks do you think get hit then? Well, banks have all been lending on commercial real estate. That's one of their more uh, profitable areas of lending, frankly. Uh, consumers are not a big profit center for, for commercial banks. So I think over time, given the nature of commercial real estate, you're going to see the losses. It's going to be very lumpy, though. It's not like one to four family homes. And, and is, the, is there something, though, that the banks can do to get ahead of this problem? <laughs> not, not really. How do you sell short commercial real estate right. when you're the senior or you think you're the senior lender? 
uh, but the equity has been wiped out, as you know, Mr. Buffett was just saying, right? We're going to have to take our lumps. The, the cap rates, everything about commercial real estate for the last few years hasn't made much sense. So we're going to have to reprice that asset class, too.